So hello, hello everyone. This is MMA Interesting Prospects podcast episode number three. Today our guest is uh, Peyton Talbot, undefeated uh, fighter who is currently A1 combat uh, bantamweight champion. And uh, Peyton, uh, how are you? I'm doing good this morning. Feeling good. Uh, great. You have a very important uh, fight uh, in the uh, next few weeks against Christian Rivas. Uh, so please tell me, uh, how do you prepare from the, the, I think, the biggest challenge uh, so far in your, in your, in your career? Um, I'm just doing the same thing because it hasn't not worked yet. So I've just been training tough, training a lot of mus muscular cardio and trying to emphasize a little bit more wrestling because I know this guy's just going to try to wrestle fuck me. So. Okay, and uh, how many weeks uh, do you usually uh, uh, have uh, training, like training camp? Like six, eight? Um, I'll be pretty intense for probably five or six, but I'm, I'm in camp year round. I train all year, so I don't take any breaks. Okay, and how many uh, times do you train uh, in one day? Usually one. Um, some days I'll do two. So I'll usually train like seven times a week, but I'll train Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday. So some days I double up, but usually just one. Okay, and you uh, you were uh, king of the cage amateur uh, champion uh, in the bantamweight division. You are currently A1 uh, champion in bantamweight division, and all your fights ending uh, ended uh, uh, by the finish. So uh, do you think that? Uh, like uh, four or a fifth round can be challenging for you or it doesn't matter you will uh, feel the same the, the first rounds um i feel like the longer the fight goes on it's in my favor i don't like to ever go to a decision i've always finished people because i think that's the thing to do when you fight but um this fight i guess um the athletic commission didn't approve it to be five rounds because i haven't had enough fights so it's only going to be three rounds Okay, and I saw in your uh, record that you have a few uh, finishes in the third round, uh, third round. So it's uh, always good to to see that it's not your that you are only the first round fighter, but you can finish uh, in in every ever any time, uh, even if you are a little bit more tired. Yeah, I I believe that I usually get better as the fight goes on. The longer it goes, the the sharper I get and the more fun I start having. And whenever I'm having fun, I always do better. So the longer it goes, the better. Yes, and we can see the, the fun in your uh, last few fights uh, when you uh, fought for the A1 combat. Uh, you you fought like a little bit like in the flow state when you uh, d dropped your opponents and, and uh, you, you, you feel good, it seems. So it's, uh, it's always good to see a, the fighter that, uh, who is not tense, not stressed, but, you know, feeling the fight, feeling the, the, the flow. Yeah, it's just confidence. I usually, I don't know if you've seen, but I'll usually let him up, especially if it's early in the first round when I knock him down, because, I don't know, I don't want to rush a finish. I like to just drag it out of them, wring them out like a wet rag. Yes, in your last fight, you dropped uh, your opponent by the jab and then you let him stand up. So so usually the fighter want to, to finish uh, the, the fight as quickly as they can. And you could, I believe that in the moment, but you but you prefer to let him stand up. It's a little bit risky, but, but uh, definitely fans uh, love it. Yeah. Yeah, it is a fan favorite. It's just confidence too. I know that I never feared that I was going to lose. So, okay. And your opponent, uh, Christian Rivas, uh, seems to be the the biggest challenge of your career. And uh, do you know uh, anything about your opponent, about his style, uh, like previous fights? Uh, yeah, I've seen the last three of his fights. Um, I think he's a dog for sure. Like he's very skilled. He's good at what he does, but I'm not a big fan of his fight style. He kind of just takes people down and holds them. And I don't think anybody really wants to watch that. Um, I know that's what he's going to try to do to me. So um, I don't know. I think um, it's either going to be me beating him up on his feet and stuffing a takedown, or it's just going to be him holding me down the whole fight. 
which isn't going to happen. So. And uh, in the same card, there is an interesting fight uh, Ishihara against Gates. Both fighters fought for the UFC. And do you think that the winner of this fight can uh, fight uh, for the belt next? Um, Teruto is my boy. I love him. Ishihara, I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, yes. We're not allowed to fight each other because we're managed by the same people. They were actually going to match make us to fight each other um, earlier on, which I was looking forward to. That would have been a great fight. But um, we're managed by the same people. We cross train all the time. So it just wasn't smart. Um, but I think if I win this fight, I'm going to move on to a bigger promotion, hopefully. And same with Christian. If he wins this, he's probably going to go to the UFC. We both have criteria. So I think when I leave, maybe Teruto will fight for the belt if he wins this next fight. Um, but there's a lot of other guys too, like Billy, Hector, some of the guys I've fought that are on the come up in my weight class that should be fighting for the belt soon. Okay, and would you be interested in taking a fight in uh, Dana White uh, Tuesday night contender series, or you would prefer to go uh, straight to the to the UFC? Uh, I'm down for whatever. I think contender series would be cool because um, everybody kind of fights like their life is on the line, and I think it would be cool to be thrown into that. Um, it's kind of different when you already have the contract and you're just fighting for the U UFC, but... I think to be in there with someone and have your back against the wall and like you have to win, otherwise you don't get paid. Like I would like to be put into that kind of situation. So that would be cool. Okay, and Bellator or PFL, would you be interested in th these promotions? Yeah, I'd be interested in those as well. The only reason they're not my first pick is because the toughest guys on the UFC and I don't. I know PFL probably pays more, but I don't really care about the money. I just want to fight tougher dudes and be put in the worst situations possible for whatever reason. So, and uh, please tell me about your beginnings uh, in fighting. Uh, when you started to to training MMA, do you uh, wrestle before? Yeah, so I wrestled all throughout high school. Was never like super great at it. Never really won too many titles. Um, but then um, I had some offers for college, but I never went. And so I just started going to school uh, here in Reno at UNR. And then I um, think I was watching some Conor McGregor highlights or something. And I just wanted to try it because I was kind of in a rough spot and I needed an outlet. So uh, from the day I came into the gym, which is still the same gym I'm at now, um, I got like the crap kicked out of me by one of the pro fighters because I didn't understand that you're supposed to go half speed when you're sparring and I just started teeing off on people. Um, but from that moment when he was just beating the shit out of me, I fell in love with it because it was so humbling. Okay, and right now, what is your uh, favorite part of the training? Is it uh, boxing, uh, BJJ? Um... I really like kickboxing, especially when you can take somebody into deep waters with just forward pressure and um, just like tight boxing, knees and elbows. That's my favorite part of it. Wrestling's all right, but it's not pretty. It's not fun to watch. Yes, and we can see in your fights that you prefer to stand up. And when you are on the ground, you are more the, the ground and pound type uh, when you're fin finishing your opponents. Always. Okay, so, so far, what would, would you say is your best performance yet? You have uh, eight fights overall. Do you have the, the favorite one? Um, amateur included, I would say probably my last amateur fight against this guy named Alex Gomez. Um, that one or the uh, Hector fight. I think I performed really well in the Hector fight and I looked... Somewhat clean. I made a couple mistakes, but he definitely brought out a lot of technique and skill because of his style. And in the fights that I saw, you you didn't have, to be honest, really any problems. Uh, maybe except the, the the your first uh, pro fight uh, when you have your uh, back taken. But except that, you you like. Uh, of course, you are uh, punched or kick uh, sometimes but but overall your performances i believe that that great and and you can be in a bigger promotion uh, right now 
But yeah. it, all, it all, all also would be great to be uh, tested be, before the, the, the UFC or some, some bigger promotion. And maybe Rivas will be the, the guy who will uh, challenge you in some ways. Yeah, I think he, he's going to challenge me for sure. I've been told by a lot of people that I'm really hard to take down and hold on the ground because I'm just big for my weight class. But um, the way I've seen him fight and how heavy his pressure is, I think it's going to be a challenge for me either way. Um, and he has great cardio. I've always had a cardio advantage, but his cardio seems to be on point. So um, he looks like he can wrestle for days. So he's not going to stop trying to take me down. So I think it'll be a good um, challenge, and I'm not shying away from that. I think in this sport, there's a lot of um, hypocrites and liars, and I, as long as I'm doing my job and winning, I'm here to expose those people, and I don't think you should be biased in taking a fight. Um, sometimes when you're given a challenge, you just have to overcome it. You can't just shy away from it. Too many people get away with that in this sport, and I'm tired of it. Okay, and you fought... Uh... All your fights in the bantamweight division, who I, uh, which I believe is the, the best uh, division right now, currently in all promotions in the UFC, in the Bellator, we have so many many uh, great fighters. And uh, do you plan to to stay at bantamweight, or in a few fights you would go to 145? Um, I'm going to try to stay bantamweight as long as I can. Um, I think I'm able to do it, but. In between fights, I, I get fat sometimes. I'll get up to like 165 and I'll cut down from there. So that's 30 pounds. Um, I think I could definitely be healthy at like 175, but food costs money and I'm never in like the best financial spot, at least in this point in my career. So it works out so that um, I can kind of stay lighter. But I think the longer I can stay at bantamweight, the better, because those 145ers hit hard. And uh, your favorite fighter is, is Max Holloway. Uh, and uh, w what do you like about his style? Because I'm not going to... Uh, uh, yes, because for me, he's the, the, like, the, the most entertaining fighter in the all of MMA. So, so I would like to, to know why you are a fan of his. I like him because he's entertaining. Um, you can tell while he's in there, he is really enjoying himself. And he's not just trying to win, but he's trying to deconstruct his opponent. And he's trying to um, habitualize their reactions. And he's trying to lay traps uh, for later on in the fight. And he, he's not trying to finish them right away. He's trying to get to know them. And he's trying to make them pay for all their mistakes. And I just like how no matter who he's fighting, um, he always manages to drag them into deep waters, and that's where Max swims and just swims laps around people. So I've always liked him for that. Um, he's like the kind of guy that just like if he's falling off of a cliff, he's going to drag you with him. Doesn't matter. You're both going down. So I like him for that reason. Yes, in my opinion, his fight against Kelvin uh, Cater was the, the single best performance ever. Uh, he was in the, the float state all five rounds. Uh, he, his fight against Poirier was great uh, too. Uh, so, and he actually, many fans think that he won a second fight against Volkanovski, who is uh, like the pound for pound one or two. He won that fight. I don't care. I'll die on that hill. He won. Yes, uh, yes, I agree. That he won at <laughs> least three, three rounds. Yeah. This. Uh, the, the third one, of course, was a little bit different than Volkanovski all, yeah. uh, all, all rounds. But yes, yes, I think that it was quite controversial, controversial decision. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't really like Volk because he used to weigh 245. There's no way he should be a featherweight. But um, and he beat my favorite fighter, so that's another reason. But those were good fights. And what are your goals in uh, fighting? Like in five years, uh, where would you like to, to be? Like in the top 15 of UFC, fighting for the title? In five years? Yes. Uh, in five years, I'd like to be at least top 15, top 10. Um, I just, I want to fight the best dudes. I'm not too worried about titles and um, uh, numbers and standings. I just want to, I want to get in there with uh, the toughest people and take them into deep waters where they haven't been before. And I want to just be able to show the audience my soul. 
And do you have a dream matchup that you would like to to have right now? Right now, yeah. I I think in um, the very near future I could whip Sean Sean O'Malley's ass. Um, I think we have very similar styles, and I've been compared to him a lot, and it just irks me. Um, but I think I could give him a good run for his money. So that's my matchup. Yeah, yes, yes, that's true that your styles uh, are a little bit similar. So, of course, he's uh, more known and more experienced, but as far as style, yes, yes, it's it's similar. Okay, and if you uh, could take one skill from any fighter, uh, like uh, currently or in the past, what would you, what would you take? Um, I think I would just take Tyson's power any day. I've never really been blessed with power, but you can't deny that guy. Anyone he touches would go to sleep. Okay, and uh, before the fight, like uh, let's say it's 10 hours to the fight. So how do you deal with the the pressure of the fight of the uh, fight fighting in a few hours? Um, I don't really get too nervous before the fight. Um, most of it's just excitement because I'm just excited to get in there and I just want to get it over with. Um, uh, a lot of things that help me is I just know that with the passage of time, like it's going to happen either way. Um, and uh, my body already knows what to do. I've done all the training. That usually helps because I, I don't leave any stones unturned in camp. And I know that I've worked hard enough to get to where I am and nothing I've done has led me down to a loss. So I don't get too nervous. I think the biggest thing is just staying relaxed. As long as I'm relaxed, my body's going to know what to do and I can fight from any place when I'm relaxed. If I'm like, I don't know, if I'm super amped, I know I'm going to gas an adrenaline dump early. So I try not to do that. So yes, that's never happened before. So <laughs> hopefully the, this will not happen uh, in next fight. And after the fight, what do you uh, like to do when you know that you really can't training uh, because you, you are, I don't know, beaten or tired? What do you like to do? Watch movies, uh, some hobbies? Uh, I'm probably going to spend some time with my friends in California. We'll surf and skate. Um for like the week, the following week after, I'll spend some time with my girlfriend, go see some places, um, and we'll just party a lot and get into, get into some trouble, do what a, a young adult does, but just do it better. Okay, so what's next for you? When you won, uh, when you will win this fight against Rivas, what would be perfect scenario for you? <laughs> Uh, perfect scenario is I get the call from big man Dana and either get offered contender series or um, just a spot. Um, so I think, I mean, I've talked to managers and promoters and they say that that's probably the next step for me anyway, as long as I win. Um, so, yeah, I just want to start beating up Dana's golden boys. That's the next step. So maybe next step will be a fight against Sean O'Malley. <laughs> when uh, I don't know if he is scheduled to fight someone right now, but maybe maybe it will be like a free spot and <laughs> he will take this. Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't turn it down, but I don't think they're going to have me fight Sean this early. I got to earn my keep first, which is totally fair. Um, but I just hope that I get tested um, in all of my following fights. I don't want any easy ones, so... Okay, and uh, what style is the the hardest for you to to fight? Is it uh, like a pressure wrestler of or a good kickboxer? I think the hardest person for me to fight is someone who is kind of long and just backs up the whole fight. Nothing drives me more crazy than somebody that just doesn't engage in action. Um, so I think the more action, the better. Um, especially with my style, because I like to smother and put forward pressure. But if someone's just taking space away from you and backing up and being boring, then it's really hard to flow with someone like that and get into your flow state. So luckily we have a cage around us, so that usually isn't a problem. But yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, what is your favorite fight? Is it really a Kimbo against uh, Dada 5000? Yeah. Yeah, it would for sure be. 
uh, Kimbo Slice versus Dada 5000. Um, just the sheer amount of skill they used and how talented those two fighters were and how active and crazy the fight was, I think. It's just like always left a place with me. Yes, yes, the fight was <laughs> crazy. A lot of happened uh, in, the, in this okay. like 15 minutes or, or something like this. Yeah, no, it was a terrible fight, but um, it just looked like they two pull, they pulled two uh, random guys out of the crowd and just had them fight each other, which I thought was hilarious because Kimbo usually has like pretty good cardio for like who he is. Um, but I think it just goes to show that like, I think Kimbo died a couple months later of heart failure and Dada 5000 went into cardiac arrest after that fight because of his weight cut or some kind of complication. But um, I just showed that they were still slugging as slow as they were um, with their hearts compromised. And I think both of them just, that was one of those fights where they both like showed their soul to the audience and as terrible as they looked, like you could tell that they were in there fighting. Okay, and uh, did you ever fought, uh, fought in uh, boxing, kickboxing, or any other sport uh, than MMA, uh, not including wrestling? Uh, yeah, when I was like 12 years old, um, I trained for like two months in boxing and then got uh, mashed up against some like kid that was 5-0. and oh. I had to go up a weight class. It was a terrible fight, um, but my coach made me take it. Um, and I went out there, and he just, like, landed on me for, like, 15 seconds straight because I just, like, wasn't ready to start the fight. And my coach threw the towel in. I got super pissed, cried in front of everyone. So that was my first experience with, like, competition and fighting. And then I did a kickboxing tournament during COVID and won it. Um, but it was, like, it wasn't full contact. We were wearing shin guards and headgear, so. Okay, so you are more more focused on MMA. Yeah, yeah, I don't mess around too much with other stuff. Okay, and uh, where did you uh, currently train? Is it in uh, Reno? Yeah, it's well, it's in Sparks, but it's right next to Reno. It's like kind of the same town. Okay, and uh, do you have uh, sparring partners who are uh, like professional fighters who, who fought uh, for uh, uh, maybe not UFC, bar, but uh, bigger promotions, or this is a rather local uh, gym? Um, it's it's a local gym, but I think people, if they know anyone, it would be Sinjin Smith and Oscar Ramirez. They both fought in Bellator once. Uh, Sinjin could have fought in the UFC, but he got injured. Um, and, I mean, Paige Van Zant used to train with us. She actually started with us, but we don't like to claim fame from that. Um, those are probably the only three. Rick, call it, my coach, knows quite a bit of people. Okay, and if you have a chance to go uh, for the training camp, like uh, eight weeks training camp, uh, where would you uh, plan to go? Is it in the US or, or, I don't know, Thailand? I would stay here. I, I like my gym. They give me what I need. Um, from time to time, I'll go to Uriah's gym and MMA Gold, um, Alpha Male and MMA Gold, and I'll cross train with those guys, but it's like driving distance. It's only two and a half hours away, so... I'll just like spend the day out there, get some good sparring in and some good work. And that's enough for me. Okay. And okay. Uh, do you have a chance to, yeah, I, I believe so, but to talk to Uriah Faber, he is a legend of the, of the game, of the smaller weight classes. So. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a couple conversations. Every time I go there, he's super generous and nice and, um usually like has me go with certain people based on my skill style um so it's just it's nice to know that he always kind of has an eye out for me um super nice guy very uh family oriented um and you can just tell that he has a really good head on his shoulders so it's been cool talking to him but i never really idolize people like that he's just a human like me and i think he kind of gets that vibe so it's just nice to know that Okay, and uh, how many times would you like to, to fight this year? Um, I'd say three tops. My body's got quite a bit of mileage on it right now. I don't want to get into the specifics, but um, I need to let a couple bots uh, rest and heal the way they need to. But I always say that and just end up um, fighting like very soon after because I can't get too far away from it. 
So we'll see. I think about three times should be good. Okay, so maybe this fight in the A1 and two UFC bouts. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, Peyton, so uh, good luck on your fight. I hope that you will win this and uh, your career will go uh, further with with more titles and more accomplishments. And I hope that we can uh, talk after your fight or later uh, this year too. Yeah, yeah, I'm done talking to you again. You seem like a nice dude. Okay, so thank you and good luck. Thanks, appreciate it.